Father, we thank you this morning. Truly, we come with a heart of thanksgiving, Lord. Appreciating the work that was done on the cross that purchased an eternal freedom for us. This morning, one will say once again, Father, we love you. Thank you for the supreme sacrifice. Thank you for breaking the yoke of hell and the bondage of Satan. Thank you for the liberty made available for us. We bless you this morning, Lord. Take all the glory. We exhort you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, have a worship. In Jesus' name, have a worship. Can we put those hands together for him this morning? Hallelujah. If you are truly glad, put those hands together. Amen and amen. We can have our seats. You're welcome to this morning's section. Is the uh, third day already. And I want to appreciate God for such an awesome time in his presence. Uh, these three days. I can assure you today is yet going to be just an exceptional day. Um, you know, even, you know, better and bigger than the two days that we've had already. Hallelujah. Ask me why? Because the glory of the latter house is always greater. Hallelujah. And I trust God that somebody here this morning, God, we cause that you testify in the name of Jesus. That you will have a testimony, a short testimony, that upon this mountain, after these four days, that God will give you a short testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to appreciate God for the privilege to stand before us this morning. Hallelujah. I also want to thank God's servant, our Father in the Lord, uh, for such a rare privilege to stand before us this morning to bring forth God's word. Um, I also want to appreciate our, our national um, coordinator in the person of Pastor Remy Okbale here. Thank you, sir. And of course, uh, every other servant of God in the house and uh, every one of us here seated. I believe that God is doing, you know, awesome deeds already with us and uh, amongst us this season in the name of Jesus. It's our season of next level, so never lose sight of what God has declared concerning you and I this season. It's our season of, of, of next level. And I'm trusting God that truly every one of us here, by the time we leave on Sunday and on Monday, you will truly say that of a truth, the God of heaven has visited you with a next level testimony in the name of Jesus. Just to add to what has been said already, this is on Thursday, uh, the topic of my section is next level break forth. Break forth, next level break forth. In 1 Samuel chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 12, uh, verse 6, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 6, the Bible says, and Samuel said, Samuel said unto the people, it is the Lord our God that advanced Moses and Aaron and that they brought your fathers out of the land of Egypt. Samuel was trying to tell them that if, if there is any force that that can move a man from where the man desire to be, from where you are to where you want to be, or to enable you break forth in life, Samuel was saying, it takes God to make it happen. And he was saying, for example, let me give you an example, an instance. He said, all that you've heard about our fathers living in Egypt, he said, it was God that advanced the cost of Moses and Aaron. Oh, my prayers for you today. 
is that that same God that is with us and available with us on this mountain will cause that you advance in the name of Jesus. That same God will cause that you will have a breaking forth testimony this season in the name of Jesus. It's the same God that advanced their cause. And if that same God is with you and I, you also, you are going to move to a higher level this season in the name of Jesus. You know, God has a way of doing his thing. That's why I just love God. It didn't matter the superpower that was in Egypt. It didn't matter the opposition. Oh, in fact, I love the way our Father the Lord painted the picture yesterday. It didn't matter the opposition. It didn't matter whether the 400 years that was set for them has elapsed. It was 430 years. And Moses was still stalling in meeting up to the requirement to move them out. But God knew it was time to move them out because the cry of the people was becoming too deafening. So it doesn't matter the situation that you are going through this morning. Thank God, God has brought you to this place of betting this season. That as that hunger continues in your heart, the Bible says they cried continually unto God. It was for 30 years. The time was not yet right because the Moses to take them out was not ready. But God said it was time to move. I have come to declare concerning you this season. is your time of breaking forth in the name of Jesus. That whatever has kept you back, whatever has kept you down, has held you back and down and low. Whatever has denied you of the things that God has for you and has made available for you. I have come to declare that upon this mountain, somebody is breaking forth this season in the name of Jesus. That God record that you break forth this season in the name of Jesus. So, what is breaking forth? How can we, how can we explain breaking forth? What will you call breaking forth? Breaking forth can be a, it can be a forceful separation from the usual and moving forward. A forceful separation from the usual and God causing you to advance forward. God separating you from the usual routine takes you from the usual routine. And God saying, because it's my child, because it's my time, because it's his time, it's a time. It might not be the usual routine, but I'm choosing him or her to move forward. That is why I believe that God shall be choosing you this season to move forward in the name of Jesus. Is a forceful separation from the usual. In Genesis chapter, chapter 38, verse 29. Let, let's see that. Genesis 38, 29. In the account of Genesis 38, 29, we don't have all the time to go through all the account. Tama, Tama has gone through a lot in her life. You know, she had two husbands. She lost the two husbands. Oh, I believe that the devil, the enemy, was attacking Tama because God had seen ahead that Tama was going to give birth to a Pharez that would be in the genealogy of Jesus. So there was a fight against her all her life. Lost two husbands. The father-in-law sent her back home to go stay at home. While she was home, there was something that was Yet burning on her inside. I believe she knew there was a destiny to be fulfilled. There was a destiny that she must align and to be able to bring to pass. And there was something that was moving her until she got to this point in her life. And the Bible says it came to pass as she drew her hand. No, let's go to 28 first. Let's do let's do let's do 28 before before the before the 29. And it, Yes, as, okay. And it came to pass as she travailed that one put out his hand and the midwife took it and put a bound 
on his hand a scarlet thread saying, this one came first. That's a normal routine. The normal style. The normal system. It's the usual way. But in verse 20, in verse 29, and it came to pass, the one that brought her his hand first drew it back. That behold, his brother came out. Sorry. And it came to pass uh, that, that he drew back his hand. Uh, that behold, his brother came out. And she said, how hast thou broken forth? You know, he broke forth. He broke the usual and the regular pattern. The nonsense and everybody, they were expecting the one that drew up his hand first to come out. But lo and behold, the one that came out was a different person entirely. Oh, the world, even your family may be thinking that nothing good will come out of this world. I've come to let you know this season that the spirit that will take you to break forth is being released upon you on this mountain this season in the name of Jesus. Broke forth from the usual. They expected the one that showed up first to, 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 to to be the one to manifest. <laughs> oh, tell somebody next to you, overtaking is allowed. By the power of breaking forth. So brethren, my brothers, my sisters, fear not, don't be troubled. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter whether you are coming from the rear. It doesn't matter how far you are behind. It doesn't matter, you know, how, how, how that you, you know, you know, you have not been favored all your life. I've come to let you know that on this mountain, oh, the Lord will release upon you the spirit of breaking forth in the name of Jesus. God will put upon you that spirit of breaking forth. So the first one is a forceful separation. So that we can catch up with our time. Forceful separation. And then he broke forth. The, the other way to look at breaking forward is changing the status quo. Being able to change the status quo. Changing the order of the day. God giving you the grace, the enablement to change the order of the day. David came to battle in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Let's look at it. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse, verse 26. And David came to battle. Change the status quo. David came to battle and David spoke to the men that stood by him saying, ha. David spoke to them saying, what shall be done? To the man that killed these Philistines and take it away the reproach from Israel. What shall be done? For whom this uncircumcised Philistine, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of our God? Change the David was not a military man. He came to battle all the military men. They were all afraid. They were all afraid. Nobody could engage. He, he redefined the status quo. Oh, my brother, my sister, there is a whole lot ahead of you. There is a whole lot waiting for you to conquer. So you must be ready to change the status quo. It must not be until, until this is done, before this is done. It must not be, I must wait until this happens. No, just believe God and just know, let let God put the hunger in your heart. And when you begin to see the need and the areas to bring a change, that hunger will begin to propel you to do. I can tell you, if David, because I was, I was thinking again, if, if David's father sent David to the battlefront to go and give food to his brothers, I can't imagine how many families sent messages to their kings and their brothers and their uncles 
that were at the battlefront. And yet, it didn't matter how many families sent. It didn't matter how many people went. The only thing that mattered is that one man entered into the battlefront and knew it was a time to change the status quo. One man happened upon the battlefront and knew I will not come here and go back the same and there is a reproach upon my God. It was not just, I'm sure, you know, when he, when he entered the battlefront that day, he, Goliath, was just boasting and just talking. It was okay. David said, the reproach, the reproach that was meant for my father has come upon me. I can't stand and see things go wrong in the church where I worship, in the fellowship where I belong, in the group where I am named. I can't see things, you know, you know, go, you know, go bad. And I fold my hands. He said, I must step into place. I can't be here. It doesn't matter the pastors that are there. It doesn't matter the army that were standing there. I just knew there was something wrong about the situation. That is one of the challenges we have today. People are not able to advance and break forth because they have been built into the mold. They are not able to think outside the mold. They are not able to make contributions that will change the status quo and bring a new lease of life. They just stay in there. If it is getting bad, let it get back there. If you work in an office, everybody is stealing money. We all join in the stealing money. Nobody can stand out to say, hey, I stand for God here. Then what makes you a believer? David said, I'm not ready to settle for status quo. I'm not ready for it. I want to change what has been. And then, the Bible says, he brought Goliath down. You know the story. Let's not, let's not waste our time, you know, looking at that again. He brought Goliath down. Why? Because somebody knew it was a time for a change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Breaking forward is moving the lead that defines your life. Removing the leads that defines your life. Breaking forth is removing all those leads that defines your life. I don't know what is it that defines your life. For some people, they can't break away to do the things God has for them. Because they still think that they are from a poor home. They look at everybody poor like them. And they are thinking, how can they go beyond this? All the things you, you know, you hear in church or you read in the Bible. Oh, you think that this cannot happen for me. No, 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 no. Breaking forth, breaking forth is you removing the lead from your life. Break, break the limitations set over you. Break the limitations set over your families. Break the limitations set by humans, by spirits, unknown or unknown, break the limitation set by circumstances and situations. Break it. That's what breaking forth is. And until you are ready to break those limitations, to defy the conditions, ah, the things that God wants to bring to pass may not come to pass. And then God began to look for another. He said, I have found a man. I have found my servant. Each time I read it, it tells me that if God said, I have found, it means he went searching. Oh, my prayer is when God comes searching and he gets to you, he finds you ready, he finds you ready to break the limits. It doesn't matter if your parents, they haven't gone beyond a level. You determine it. You tell yourself, I will go beyond it. Doesn't matter if you are even the last in the family. Your parents are there for you to see. You can see your brothers, your sisters. You can see everybody ahead of you. They are not making the required progress. You desire to be different. You change the status quo. I trust God that in this season, somebody is arising to change and break the lead over his life or her life in the name of Jesus. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, 1 Kings chapter 7 verse, verse 13. 
First Kings seven thirteen. First Kings seven thirteen. Hallelujah. And he said, and Solomon sent and fetched Haran out of Tyre. Go to the next verse. That's where I'm interested in really. He went and fetched Haran. And the Bible had to tell you and I, Haran was not a privileged man. He was a son of a widow. But yet he had exercised himself to a level where the king cannot proceed except he re- Except he needs the support of Haran. Breaking the lead over his life. It doesn't matter when he lost his father. He may have, you know, he may have grown up not even knowing his father. He may have grown up knowing only his mother. The Bible qualified him. He said he was a widow's son. A widow's son. With no hope of survival. With no hope of becoming anything great. He was a widow's son. And yet, after a, after, after a while, the king of the land began to look for the same widow's son. The same one whose father died. The same one, you know, whom the family may not have supported. But then, he had exercised himself into greatness that the king cannot proceed in the assignment of God for him except he sought the widow's son who was forgotten somewhere. Ah, why? Because Haran, Haran, Haran has broken the lead over his life. It doesn't matter whether his father was dead, whether he was a widow's son. I'm, 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 I'm sure he has told himself, my life will not be defined by just being a widow's son. Hallelujah. My life will be defined by the man that the entire world is looking for. If Solomon the king can come looking for Haran from Ty, I can tell you the whole world was looking for Haran. A man has come to a point where he knows that I must break forth. So, so breaking forth is remove the lead. Break the lead. Break the toga. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Okay, so let me leave that one there. Breaking the lead. Let's remove the lead from our life this season. And I know as you do, the Lord will bless you richly in the name of Jesus. To break forth is to bust out and come out. Busting out and emerging. Emerging from the, emerging from the blockade. Emerging from the obstructions to break through. Break, breaking forth means there is, there is an opposition. There is something holding you down and back. That you have broken forth. Mean that with the opposition, yet you broke forth. That's what it means. I thank God for Easter. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 27. When Jesus was buried. Was buried yesterday, Friday. Died. Buried. And in verse 62. Now on the next day. Following the day of preparation, they went and met the chief priest and the chief priest and the Pharisees came unto Pilate. Sister is saying, sir, we remember that what the deceiver has planned that on the third day, he's going to come out. 64, they said, so command therefore that the sepulchre be made secured. Let's go and secure it. And the, and the, and the, Command therefore that the sepulchre be made secure until the third day. Lest his sepulchre come by night and steal him away. And say unto the people that he's risen from the dead. So that the last error shall be worse. If we done the first error. So let's go lock it up. They locked it up. They sealed it up. They put a stone. They put a rock. So that you're not thinking of one small stone outside. They put a rock against the tomb. And sealed it up. Uh huh. Breaking for is imagine you break the barriers and the marriage. Hallelujah. In chapter 28, verse 2, chapter, chapter, chapter 28, verse 2, the Bible says, 28, verse 2, 28, verse 2, 28, verse 2. Hallelujah. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord has descended from heaven and came 
rolled back the stone. When they came to look for Jesus the next day, he has emerged. Wasn't there. Doesn't matter the obstacle. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter where they have conspired. It does not matter. It doesn't matter who is the man that did the charm in the village. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the economy of Nigeria. It doesn't matter if they say there is no job in Nigeria. There are jobs. There are jobs for men and women that understand their God. There are jobs. People are still getting employed every day. Hey, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter where you are now in school. You can still come out with a better degree. It's just to tell yourself, as I get back home, it's going to be a different story. As I get back home, I'm going to do it differently. It doesn't matter whether you're already behind. Why? Because God can cause you to break forth. I trust God that this season, somebody truly will break forth in the name of Jesus. That this season, somebody will truly break forth. In the name of Jesus. As a Christian, one of the ways I believe that brick fall becomes easy, simple, simplified for every one of us. Every one of us. Physics for those that are science students here. Physics says that a body can remain in a state of rest. Or can continue in a steady motion, except or until an external force is applied. So, which means, which means, breaking forth is an unusual momentum or surge. And that unusual momentum or surge. That takes a man against the wall of opposition and takes you to the other side of next level comes by the Holy Spirit. That is why Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Can we have it? Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The whole earth was formless. Nothing was moving. And God wanted a next level operation. Can we have it on the screen? Genesis 1-2. God wanted a next level operation. Everything was chaotic. And why they were, you know, you know, why the chaos was on. The Bible says... And the spirit of God moved. That's, that's what I'm looking for. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the earth. That was all God needed. And when the spirit of God moved, the earth began to break forth. <laughs> As the spirit of God moved, the earth began to spring forth. Oh, I believe God that that same spirit is moving upon you to begin to spring forth this season in the name of Jesus. As the spirit of God moved, things began to spring forth. Like Pastor Godwin was saying yesterday, God began to create and God began to make. God began to invent and innovate. As a spirit moved. Brethren, that same spirit can move upon you. And you will break forth and nothing can stop you this season in the name of Jesus. But you need to understand that you need to connect to this spirit that can move. 
and then nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. And I'm trusting God that truly this season, don't you be able to stop you in the name of Jesus. Only you can stop yourself. Only you can put a cap upon your life. So please, brethren, don't put any cap upon your life. Allow the Spirit of God to move this season so that you can break forth in the name of Jesus. Psalms 78, 41. Don't put a cap on yourself. Psalms 78, 41 says, They turned back and tempted God. And they limited the move of God. They, by their own hands, they limited the move of God. So it is you that can't, it is, you are the first one that can stop your breaking fall. Because of the cap you have placed upon yourself. They saw the giants and they told themselves, we cannot. Please go back and read Numbers 14 again. We cannot make this progress. And God began to say, because you have said you cannot make it. He said, whatever you say in my hearing, that I will do. You truly cannot make it. So the first, the first cap is to break the cap you put on yourself. Break the limitation you put on yourself. Who said you cannot... I mean, just break the limitation. Let's break it. Break the limitation, men, 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 situation, spirit can put over your life. Let's break it this season. And I know as you break it, God will truly give you victory in the name of Jesus. Let's break the limitations this season. And who, who is he that should be desiring breaking forth? How do I know I need break forth? I need to break forth. How do I know? How do you know? You will know if you will know if the word of God no longer makes sense to you. It doesn't prick your heart anymore. When the word of God is being said, you just you have. When you, when you realize you've lost excitement in the things of God. The things of God does not excite you anymore. You need breaking forth. When, when going to church or church meetings and fellowships, when it becomes monotonous to you, you need the breaking forth. When sin no longer looks like sin in your eyes, you need breaking forth. You need to cry out. You need breaking forth. When your prayer life has dried up, hey, you need breaking forth. When you are not able to study the word of God again, it doesn't give you excitement. You need breaking forth. You need breaking forth. Uh, when you lack the zeal to win souls for Christ, you need breaking forth, my brother, my sister. You need breaking forth. When you stop relying on the guidance of God to, you know, to help you, to lead you, the Holy Spirit, and you now want to reason it out all by yourself, and you keep making one mistake after another, you surely need breaking forth. You need it. You need it. When there is no genuine love, when there is no longer genuine love for brethren, you need breaking forth. When you have stayed too long at a level, you need breaking forth. You need breaking forth. When you have been coming from the rear for too long, you surely do need breaking forth. You need it. You need it. When life, when life results are not there, when there are no results to show for life, when there is no purpose for life, you sure do need breaking forth, my brethren. You just need breaking forth in your life. You need breaking forth. When there is consistent failure, consistent failure all around. When you see poverty and deprivation all around you, you sure do need breaking forth. You, don't, you need breaking forth. You need it. 
you need it. When there is no more hunger for the next level, you need breaking forth. You need breaking forth. So that, you, so that when you look at all of these and many more that we don't have all the time to begin to reel out to us, you just know, hey, I need breaking forth. I need breaking forth. And I know that the spirit of God is available to help you and I break forth this season into greater things and better things in the name of Jesus. The next level is about breaking forth into the next level. I want to believe that part of the thing that you must take home from uh, Thursday night is a to-do list. What must I do to break forth? Otherwise, what must I do to break forth? I believe that is a question that should be in, you know, everybody's heart. And the number one thing is the power of vision. We've heard it already in this meeting. The power of vision. We need the power of vision. If you cannot see it, it's tough. Ah, like that passage you read in First Samuel 17. And David spoke to the men around him to say, what shall be given to the... David could see what all the military men could not see. Is the power of vision. The power of vision. In Proverbs 29, 18, message translation, if you can have that. First one is the power. If you cannot, your life, oftentimes, our life moves towards the direction of our vision. If people cannot see what God is about, they stumbled all over themselves. King James to say, where there is no vision, my people perish. But this one is saying, that, that vision is about what God is about to bring to pass. How was Joseph able to stay? You think it's easy to live through the house of Potiphar? Without a vision? No, no. It was not just somebody who loved God. No. Many, many young men, many young women entered into Babylon with Daniel. Only Daniel and the three came to reckon it. Because it's not just being an Israelite. It's not just being, it's not just being a Christian. No. It's being able to see the things that God is about and when Daniel entered with his three friends they said we can see the glory that lies ahead of all they said we will not define ourselves with a portion of the king's meat why because they could see something ahead you are not able to say no to that you know to that infidel who is planning to defy you you're not able to say no to that lecturer who is asking for sex to pass you why because you can't see beyond it can't see. You can't see beyond it. And breaking forward, the ability to break forward requires you and I being able to see what God is doing. That's what enables you. That's what gives you the strength. You think it's easy to tell Madame no. And you know that you are going to go to jail. You told Madame no to her face. And you were sent to jail. Any man that can do that has seen something. Has seen something. So you need vision, my brothers, my sisters. We need vision. We need vision. Without vision, you are not able to make the required progress. We need knowledge. The power of knowledge cannot be overemphasized. The 
power of knowledge. I like Job 14, 14. The Bible said, if a man dies, shall he live again? Job said, all the days of my appointed time. He said, I will wait. Why? Because he had a knowledge that the wife didn't have. He said, I will wait. It doesn't matter. Let it be. I have lost everything. Let it be the only thing I have. I'm holding is God. I'm ready to wage and break forth because I know I have God. He had understanding. He had knowledge. It takes knowledge to break forth. 